right, it's Pete, Mind Wise Man's channel, AK Maverick Outdoors, and I'm out on a Sunday in the latter part of November 2018, and I'm out on an afternoon trek. Uh, it's about coming up to about four o'clock in the afternoon, the sun's just going down, and uh, I'm going to be finishing off the latter half of my trek into the dark. So I know this area very well, it's an ancient Roman um, walled town called Caliva Artibatum in the south of England and it was one of the biggest established Roman towns in uh, Britain. And it goes from where you've seen me come from all the way round as far as you can see on the ground level horizon even beyond the trees that are over there all the way round to the old church. As I say, I've been here many times before, but it's just nice to trek out in the dark. And also I want to try out my new head torch come hand torch. It's a two-in-one, really, really powerful that I've just acquired. And because I've got a few um, winter treks coming up, uh, this new bit of kit I want to actually try out. And sample it working as I go through the overgrowth and undergrowth of the trees a bit later on whereby it's even more shaded and dark. Well, I've got my engineer's pack sort of reduced with the straps, just tightening up to make the volume a little bit tighter and less sort of cumbersome. And in there I've got a jacket, thermal jacket to put on a bit later. I've got a snack, waterproofs, and a couple of other bits and pieces that I might need if I got stuck out on this terrain unexpectedly. So I'm gonna get the backpack mounted back on me and uh, carry on get on the move because the chill's starting to kick in now. The breeze is there, it's a very light breeze, but the chill factor is actually getting down to about five to four degrees. So I want to get on the move and warm myself up. I don't take the easy route. I like to train my legs on the inclines, going up and down the dips. So I'm always sort of in condition as best as possible for any challenging terrains that I want to go on. And of course, besides all of that, keeping your body relatively conditioned so you can do the activities you want. Whereby what I'm gonna now do is go down there and contour along there and then come back up there <laughs> short little up and downer but again it gets with legs working and makes it a little bit more interesting besides being able to rely on your body which is the main thing that's got to get you around it's also relying on decent kit as well so that's why I want to do a two-in-one come out go on a jolly afternoon into the night walk and uh, and then try out my hand come head torch when it gets dark and I'll show you the effects of that I've done a few little test runs with it at home and it's like a floodlight in the living room and the back garden, so I'm well impressed with it. So I'll give you a few specs a little bit later on. But here we go for another little bit of up and down dip terrain. So a proper bit of organic gear I'm missing. <laughs> it's hair on my head. Hair's got the buff to just keep the chill factor up. And going into the foliage of the trees and the beginning of some of the woods around the periphery. So I'm gonna be using one of my torches that I've used before, just on the beginning of some of this terrain. 
and then I can really compare it to the head torques that I'll be using in a little while when it gets much darker. So now I'm going to go into the wooded path terrain area. In about half hour to an hour it's going to get much darker and then I can really put my new head torch come hand torch to use. Okay so that's where I've come from. The wooded sort of the boughs of the trees arch over the top so it's a bit of a tunnel really you can't really see it. I'm purposely not engaging any torch or light. I can see quite easily although obviously it's getting dark and dusky but I like to get my eyes adjusted to sort of night vision if you want to call it. You can just see as I look up above obviously there's more light because of the sky but then when I come down to sort of my head level to my left you can sort of see the field and the woodland beyond. You can't see it now as I now look to my right you can see just the top edge of the Roman wall but you'll see more of that when I engage the head torch later on on my way back when it's absolutely dark full night time. Okay I'll let you just at least see me <laughs> walking along the path but this is what you couldn't see a little bit further on. I mean, I've got my torch ready just in case but I don't want to use it unless it's really really necessary. So I've come out of the woodland tunnel, if you want to call it, and it's a little bit more open here now, just the odd oak tree dotted around, and I'm on the western flank of the Roman wall, and I'm on my way to the amphitheatre, where I'm going to sit down, have a snack, and uh, try in an enclosed area using the head torch and seeing how bright it is. But again, it's gone. you can't really see here. I'm not going to put the torch on. I'm purposely leaving it because you can sort of see the adjustment I've got to make to my vision, which I can make out really well. Again, I like to practice this sort of thing. But we'll get the torch working a little bit later. But there's fresh breeze, but also in the solitude of the night, which I really enjoy. Just stopping for a moment to see the wonderment of the moon which is in a nice clear sky out to the east and it's going to sky the sky is actually going to stay clear tonight so I'm going to have a little bit of natural light from the moon albeit it's not full moon it's on the wax just over halfway but anyway let's get a move on So it's full night time now, it's coming up to about 6 o'clock on Sunday evening and I've now just arrived at the Roman Amphitheatre and I've got the head torch now fitted on its fullest beam and it illuminates the path nicely or should I say the entrance into the amphitheatre as you see now I can approach the centre coming down this entrance and then all the way around and bring us round to my right and then back up the main entrance So it's nearly like walking back into daylight. <laughs> you can see my paces quite easily. You can see the ground very easily. You 
can see now is approach the other end which is more enclosed and continue to go where I'm going to sit and have my snack which is sort of up that rampart and just sitting on that bit of a stone ledge there so from that stone ledge you can see with my new torch on main beam it really illuminates all the area what's up above me if I was checking for any deadfall or widow makers if I was out for the night and all that sort of thing and talking about deadfall from this tree up above me just above where I'm going to sit you can see that branch which wasn't there a couple of weeks ago when I was sitting in exactly the same place which is going to be just there ok I've just got my mat out ready to sit down and ready to have a refreshment but you can see my hand under the head torch the new head torch I've got and it's called moonlight it's on the very very first setting which is very subdued light you know if you were trying to be a bit sort of stealth or covert it really only radiates light I mean I can't actually show it on camera but if you imagine my hand where it is and then maybe a two foot radius maximum three foot from the center of my palm outwards all the way round I can sort of see around I'll get closer to the mat you can see the handly part of the mat but I can see it obviously easier than you can pick up on camera but once your eyesight adjusts to this as I say if you need to sort of have the light subdued for privacy stealth covert or just sort of keeping yourself out of mind's eye of other people um, once you adjust to this light you know I can see what I'm doing and again it doesn't really pick up in the bag onto camera but I can see pretty well what's in there and what I need to get out as you can see my hand now inside the bag so I hope all that makes sense so I'm standing back from where I'm going to sit and it's still on what's called moonlight I'm going to keep the button pressed now that's the low level so that radiates a light of a good sort of 10 12 foot around me obviously it gets more subdued the wider it goes but you'll notice this is a really nice smooth transition of light there's no sort of like central beam where then the light radiates out which a lot of torches have this really dilutes the light really nicely without there being any sort of haze on the outside it just obviously gets dimmer the further it goes because that's what light does but this is really a what I don't know I'd call smooth light whereby it's just a smooth effect without any sort of dots or hot points within it. I'm now going to press it onto the medium level which as you can see is a little bit brighter. I'll just go over to that tree I'll bring it back to the bag and then take it to the full. We can see the tree is a little bit brighter obviously the bark on it is very shiny so of course it will reflect a little bit then back to here but if you press it, keep it continually pressed, it'll go back to low, medium, high, low, medium, high, low, medium, high, low, medium, high, low. I'll take my finger off and it'll stay there. I'll switch it off. And because I selected the low, when I press the button again, it will return to low. I'm going to take it up to high, medium, high, leave it there. I'm going to switch it off switch it back on again and it returns to high but what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it off okay it's all dark and quiet I'm now going to press the button and leave my finger on it and it goes back to moonlight where you can just about see my hand as I say it's easier for me to see what is around me in this very subdued light that's sort of if you want to call it private light um, 
than what you're able to pick up on camera obviously. But I hope that makes the point. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press it. I've got it on the moonlight, the lowest of all. I'm going to press it, it'll go to medium. Medium there, which obviously will last longer than full beam. Now switch it off. Now I'm going to keep it continually pressed and it will go back to the moonlight which is one or two lumens. And apparently this can last on a full charge. It's specced for 45 days. So <laughs> thumbs up to that if you like subdued light for a long period of time. So as I look at the moonlight through the trees, obviously I've got that total illumination from the head torch all around here. I can actually see right the other side of the amphitheatre and again the problem with cameras they don't sort of pick up what you're trying to reproduce with light is and I'll come around this lower edge but I'm really impressed with this not only just the head torch but I can actually take it out okay so I've taken the head torch off and I've got it on the dimmest the lowest the one or two lumens it's called moonlight and I'm just going to sort of shine it up to my face so you can <laughs> see me as I talk to you. I'm just going to put my uh, another thermal layer. I've only got a t-shirt and this very very thin fleece on so as I'm now still and ready to have a snack and explain a little bit more about the torch, just show you a few features on it. I'll just take you back to when I actually unpacked it so it's easier to follow some of the details and some of the information so you can really get to grips with what this torch is about but I'm really impressed. So the torch is very robust, it's got a very firm clip attached to the torch, USB plug, charging cable and a magnetic connection where it doesn't have to actually plug into the base to charge the torch. There's a small little light indicator which glows red when it's charging and when the whole unit's charged, it turns green. So you know that you've got it ready. I've taken the clip off the torch, and now I'm gonna attach it to the head strap, whereby here, it's got a magnet. So as I turn it and just place it on, it magnetizes and fits it on. And then I secure it with a little loop, whereby now, it's securely connected, the convenience of the magnet and then that little stretchy loop that's hooked onto the fastener and now it's nice and secure to be used as a head torch and just demonstrating here with the metal radiator the magnet where it connects to charge also can affix to anything magnetic so you can adjust it and move it round so that's quite secure. So just briefly giving you some of the spec. It's waterproof, it's pretty well shockproof, and some of the spec here. It's got five settings, which I'll demonstrate more when I'm out on the trail, using it at night. But it's got three main ones, if you want to call it low, medium and high and those are the ones I'm going to be using out on the trail. There's also moon as well which is a very very subdued light but that will make more sense when I demonstrate it and there's also turbo which I'm going to demonstrate in a little while low, medium, high and turbo. Turbo is spec'd in best conditions, fully charged, warm weather obviously when things get cold that are powered by a battery they can lose their power even when they're not being used when they're in the cold 
but this has got anything um, up to 110 minutes. The high is two and a half hours. The medium, which I would prefer to use the majority of the time, is 10 hours, thereabouts. And the low can be 50 hours. Obviously those specifications are going to be based on best conditions, not cold, um, the battery being freshly charged. But anyway, let's go and put this to use and go through the main three levels and then put it on some turbo. So I've come outside and I've got it on low beam. I've now come to an more of an enclosed area of trees. I've got it on low level. Take up to medium, high, low, medium, high. I'm going to leave it on high. And what I'm now going to do is put it on turbo, which is twice as bright as this by pressing the button twice. Right, you can see that sort of white light effect, which is basically the turbo being much brighter. And I can see right at the end of the path, which is a good hundred odd meters away. But you can see this really illuminates on turbo, but of course it will use a heck of a lot of power. And I can feel the unit get warm which is an indication in the instructions it does tell you but this tiny little unit which I've got between my fingers and thumbs is giving all that illumination which is really effective and I've come into a slightly different location further away from where I was got it on turbo and you can see all this ground in front of me totally illuminated and finishing off with that tree so I've now mounted the head torch on my head and I've got it on its lowest setting so it's a little bit more defined and again, I mean when you think of that sort of really low moonlit light setting and then this, I mean this even just seems bright enough which lasts for quite a few hours as you saw on the spec. But I'm just going to take out this dry bag which I've got nice and wrapped up. It's my NBC jacket, again if you follow my travels you've seen this before. Uh, where I've washed out all the charcoal and use it for sort of day wear out on the trek. Two nice big bellows pockets, so I want to put this on now. As you may hear above me, the breeze is kicking up. And obviously my temperature's dropped a bit because I'm now not on the move. So I'm going to put this layer on now and then have a snack. take it up to its maximum so there's a nice lot of light in there so you can see all the bits and pieces that I've got in my kit bag that was a perspiration rag got some biscuits got a shemag if I need it I normally drape that over my legs sometimes I don't need it as a scarf but that sort of warms up the knees and thighs when you're sitting down so again I use that got a flask Ordinary hydrating drinking water, which I've been taking sips on because I've been out trekking for a couple of hours. And then my first aid kit. And regards my perspiration cloth, this goes down, as you see, it's folded in half. It's a rectangular piece of, uh, piece of cotton. And it goes down the centre of my back from the middle of my neck to my lower back. And it's absorbent for perspiration. Being cotton, it absorbs much better than synthetic. And again, that's sort of put in between my back and clothing for when I have a rucksack on. Folded up, ready to put back in the rucksack. I'm not going to put it down my back uh, because it's now cooler, much colder. And uh, the trek that I'm going to have back is going to be a little bit less of a fast pace because obviously it's going to be in the dark. So I've got to be careful of where I'm treading on the ground so I don't twist my ankle because it's not flat, perfect horizontal terrain out there. So uh, it will slow me down a little bit, purposely, because obviously it's to be more practical. But this, um, I'm now going to put back in my rucksack. But it does sometimes leach through a little bit of uh, dampness onto the t-shirt. But it saves having to change your t-shirt, or having a t-shirt that's soaking wet, that you've got to wait for your body heat to dry out. Hence, that's why I use this, and I find it really, really useful. So I'm now sitting down on my mat, which is nice, comfortable, for my backside. And I've got the torch on form beam. You can see me boots and legs and again just seeing a little bit more definition. You can probably see right over there on the boundary there. On the furthest point is the entrance and again I'm just panning back in. So I've taken it, the torch out of the head magnetised strap unit 
and uh, as you can see I'm just moving it around, twisting it. So of course you can sort of hold it vertically and the beam radiates obviously horizontal from, I don't want to blind you but you can see it coming around, I'll take it up, quickly take it down and holding it and I can just sort of manually move it around if I did want to actually have another head torch but I mean obviously this being a two-in-one um, if you're on the move and you want this unit as the head torch then obviously you're going to have another handheld one but if you want the two-in-one I mean this has just so many practical varied uses as I now move it around again right through into the amphitheatre then round onto that other part So as you can see I'm sitting and I've got my jacket on, feeling a little bit warmer now, I've got the hood section on. Again, I say if you follow my travel, this NBC jacket that I um, modified, took all the charcoal out, sort of gave it a lot of scrubbing wash to actually get it out. So then it's got two thin layers, but for the lightweightness of it, I mean it's really thermal. Obviously it's not a thermal jacket, it's obviously what it's made for, but I've improvised it. And I've found it, I've had it for crumbs about about 10 years now. And you'd have seen me use the trousers as well. But I like this jacket, it's lightweight. It dries easy, it's not waterproof, it's windproof though. But the NBC jacket hoods are quite high to take the gas mask and other bits and pieces you might have on your head. But what I did, I actually restitched it, made a little bit of a peak on it as you can see, and reduced it so it's more sort of fitting for a natural sort of fit to the head if you had a, a beanie hat or a bobble hat or another form of insulation on your head with this hood over the top. If you know what an NBC suit looks like you're going to know and recognise how I've actually modified and made a little bit of a peak and made it a bit more of a sort of a day wear unit if you want to call it that. And the two massive great bellows pockets that are on the chest that are really sturdy and can carry a lot of bits and pieces. So I'm now sitting in the dark, the breeze is blowing around me I enjoy it. I like the darkness, the solitude. Being out in the dark when no one else is going to be around. Tuning into your environment, not just during the daylight hours. But of course, being out at night. Okay, so let's have some bright light on the subject. I've got it on low level now. So hopefully you saw some of the spec giving you sort of a better idea of how you can utilise this torch. But I'm really impressed with it so far. But once I've had my snack, I'm going to get back out on the trail, take a slightly different route back, so I can really test it out on the move, out in the dark. So I've got it on its lowest beam. Obviously that's above the what's classed as the moonlight, which is that very, very subdued, sort of more covert, private light, as I'm calling it. So that's the first level. Then the second level, that's medium. And then once again showing you the third level, the full brightness. But I'm going to switch it off and it's got SOS mode on it. So if you press it three times, so sitting in the dark, I'm going to press it three times. It's automatically doing the SOS now. So while it was dark and the torch was off, pressed it rapidly three times on the button and then it selects this automatically. I'm now going to switch off the SOS and brought it back to low, medium, high. Then I'm going to switch it off and if I switch it back on it goes back to what I previously selected. But it doesn't previously select the SOS. Once you switch it off you've got to redo it again by pressing it three times. So it's handy having the SOS if you have to leave the light somewhere uh, and actually get onto something so it can actually signal when there's an emergency. Now as I go to have my snack and refreshment, I've actually got it on the very, very lowest light, the moonlight, one, two lumens, and I've actually got it clipped to the pocket of my jacket. Personally, I'm not one for clips. Uh, they can fall off of whatever you attach them to because obviously they'll either clip on, slide on or slide off. So if you're on the move, so I don't necessarily rely on clips, but if I'm going to be stationary, this clip is really strong, so I'm not going to be moving around. That's actually maybe going to affect the, uh, the torch to actually loosen itself and come off what I've actually clipped it on to. But as I say, as far as clips go, this is a real strong one, and I would rely on it to a point if I'm not actually moving around. 
So I've just unwrapped my shemag, which is normally folded into a sort of a double triangle, then turned around, then used as a neck scarf or sort of a hood. But what I did, I unfolded it, then folded it into four, so it's a rectangle. So it's just a thermal layer over my legs. Now you may ask, well, why not wear thermal trousers? Well, I get warm when I'm trekking about, unless it's real freezing below sub-zero temperatures, then I might wear a layer underneath my trousers. But I knew today's circumstance, I don't want to get all hot and flustered, so I'd rather be able to apply layers that I can put on or take off easily. Now, if I had thermal trousers on, um, you know, I'd probably get a little bit overheated like I do quite naturally when I'm out on the trail. So this is just a little improvisation that I always use when I take my shemag out with me and it really does the job. So this being 100% cotton, it tends to be much more thermal and considering it's sort of like four, little layers all folded together to make the rectangle it's doing the job as I'm sitting here <laughs> in the cold breeze having my snack so what I've done with the torch I've unclipped it from the left hand pocket where I inserted it into the pocket and the clip went over the outside edge of that pocket I've now without actually clipping it onto the head strap it's just fitted into the magnet and if I do need to take it off like I'm going to do now I've just taken it off I'm now holding it and then I'll just fit it back on. You might hear a clunk. And it's now magnetised on. Now if I'm on the move, I'm obviously going to get the little uh, loop and actually fasten it over and then clip it on so it doesn't actually come off. But I mean, I'm tipping my head, I'm moving my head around side to side as you can see. And all it is, is supported and held on by the magnet. So I'm well impressed with that because it's really convenient. Again, if I want to take it off, I can then use it to see what's in the bag if I'm actually looking at something else. So the practicalities are really good. And this old shemag certainly done the job because my legs now are warm and toasty. I've now taken the head torch down to its lowest light, the moonlight. And you can just about see my flask of hot sweet tea just holding it there in between the legs. And uh, the first few sips of that went down like nectar, I tell you, like nectar. But I'm sitting here now just with this very, very lowest light. Not bringing any attention to myself. Don't want to bring any attention to myself to any maybe late night dog walkers that do come around this area. As rural as it is, there's a few cottages and single little manor houses dotted around. So uh, I know unless someone's right on top of me, they're not going to see me here or know that I'm here because the light is so subdued that it's actually perfect for this particular time now. So yeah, this tilt is certainly living up to my expectations of it considering I've got a really good deal on it so that makes it even better. So everything's now back in a rucksack. Obviously I'm now wearing my jacket so that's not in there anymore. But I've equally spread out the items so it's equally distributed so the weight isn't one side or the other. So all it needs me now to do is to fold my old thermal layer, <laughs> my old shemag, put that back in the bag, get it on my back and then get back on the trail and see how good this head torch is out in the real deep dark. So taking the shemag off my legs as that thermal layer. I mean, I can really feel the coolness now. It's not uncomfortable, but I wouldn't sit here any longer without it being draped on my legs. So now I can get on the move. But once I get on the move, I'm gonna be uh, back to square one, warm and comfortable, and back where I should be on the trail. Oh yeah, and not forgetting my sit pad. Nice and cheap and cheerful. Pound from the pound shop about four years ago. This is quite a sturdy one, actually. I've got had a couple of these, which I've actually cut smaller. So it's just a, if you had a smaller back, to actually have to put it in but this one I just keep the dirty part which obviously was compressed against the ground on the outside of the rucksack and it will obviously slide down where my hands go in so it's a bit more reinforcing to the upright outside of the rucksack itself so everything fits in nice and snug and then I'll just cinch it in a little bit with the straps that are underneath and also at the top so it just compacts it a little bit more rather than having a lot of baggy weight so having them out inserted on the outer surface against the outside of the rucksack also helps keep everything just nice and tidily contained within where the back of the rucksack is against my back 
to where the inside surface of that is. So this serves a practical purpose as well. It just helps everything keep more sort of condensed within the shape of what I want in the rucksack. So that's where I was. And that's where I'm going. So to save on battery and also, you know, see what it's like in the lower level of light, I'm just going to take it down. That's switched off. Switch it on, okay, that's the lowest light, but I can still see really well within close range where I'm going. So I'll come through the sort of side rampart, which used to be the seating area of the amphitheater. So you can see I can really see easily where I'm going. Okay, so I've got it head torch mode, low level, out of the main three. And I've now relocated into the middle of the Roman town. And this is the centre path that cuts right through the middle of it. So either side I've got field, fence, few bushes, so there's no overhanging foliage of trees or anything. So this is a good example as I go along this centre path with sort of open terrain being aware of the open space around me and then utilising the torch within this sort of space and environment so I'm just going to twist it so it goes a little bit further in front so I've actually got it now as I now start to start the centre path right through the middle of the walled town. I've now got the torch projected about a good 30 foot in front. So again, although the camera doesn't sort of pick it up as well, I can really see that nice smooth light spread out either side of the path. Centre of the lit up space is about 25 foot. Then I'm going to go up to the brighter light you can see that and then just tilting my head back and I can see nearly a hundred yards in front of me okay <laughs> I keep saying it the camera doesn't pick it up but to make the point of this light it's one of the best lights for the size of the torch it's so condensed yet packed with power I'll bring the light a little bit closer so you can actually then see the texture of the ground and of course me walking but I'll just stop and then you can see the fenced bushes either side and you can see there's one of the signs which says what this place is about so you can actually see in relation to the history of this place where I actually am and that is the centre of the Roman town and that's what it used to look like after all the archaeology that's been done here since the late 1800s uh, yeah it's quite something and then here I am in the haunting dark the solitude <laughs> going out trekking and then using this new bit of kit to give it a test run and I'm well impressed with it so I'm now going to take it down to the lower light of the three. There we go. And I can see the space in front of me that's relevant and safe for me to be orientated to know what the terrain's like so I don't trip up on anything. I know what to expect. Albeit I tend to get my head torch angled. So I'm not tilting my head down too far, but just comfortable so it doesn't sort of strain your neck 
but just enough to be able to look down because you want to look at the ground in front of you anything from four to five foot and that's where the center of the light is so you know what to expect as you take three four paces to then know what you're going to reach then when you get to that third or fourth pace you can see the following three four paces that are in front so you're always <laughs> two three steps ahead of where you're going to be and this this light is perfect and it's a nice spread out light no sort of central beam which then sometimes can cast a half light shadow on the outside uh, it's a nice it's a comfortable light it's comfortable for the eyes and makes it even more of a joy to trek in the dark obviously if I need to quickly scout what's in front of me then I'll just tilt my head back hold on to the torch tilt that as well within the magnetic head strap and then readjust the button to make it brighter still with the head torch on going through the center center pathway and feeling really comfortably warm with another three layers I mean this this jacket I was thinking of actually getting I might do but you know I've got enough kit anyway and clothing but I was thinking of actually getting a specific lightweight pack away um, baffle jacket and then I thought well I'm gonna take this out again and this is just as good again it's not waterproof a lot of baffle jackets aren't they're like that thermal lightweight layer that you want to use but you know considering this video I sort of mentioned and all my other videos everything I do my outdoors activities you know it's all about the relevant kit how you can improvise it maybe do it on a budget and for the time being I'm not going to get a more sort of trendy type lightweight microfiber padded baffle jacket this actually just does the job just as well so onwards and onwards now it's the brightest light so it's easy for you to see but as I now go back into a different sort of terrain starting to get a bit more trees either side and soon I'll be going back into that tree tunnel where you'll be able to see how dark it is and then how practical this head torch can work within that tree tunnel space but I can see two three times further than probably what you can see watching this video because obviously I can see the viewfinder what's actually being reproduced on this camera but of course the naked eye can see much further as I now come to this gate so if I was out on the long haul I'd want to be thinking of conserving the battery power and not having it fully blast still got it on the lowest level soon I'm going to turn it right up because I'm now approaching the tunnel So I've now got it on its fullest beam. You can see now the images are much more sharper than when I had it on the, or if we want to call it level one. Now obviously the canopies over this pathway or this bit of the trail would feel much more enclosed when the leaves and the trees are in blossom, foliage, etc but they've still got the sort of skeletal frame over the top and where some of the branches are sort of thinner that sort of weaves that surface to enclose into the dark and create more darkness there's the wall doesn't matter where man goes eventually <laughs> here's a good example Eventually, nature takes over and returns. You wouldn't be able to appreciate that in the dark without this torch. And that's where I've come from. 
and I can see a good near 100 metres before it gets totally dark and goes round on a curve which obviously blocks off any light going through from this head torch. Going down a slight gradient here then it goes back up slightly about a 1 in 20 then meanders off to the right from what I remember at this particular point and then meanders off to the left so you want decent light to be able to predict what's in front of you and of course at the present moment when you need to know what's directly in front of you within about 5 to 10 foot. I'm now starting to get a little bit warmer, comfortably warm, so I'm going to take the hood from my head and just be able to get a bit of fresh cool air around my head to keep my temperature constant. Now about another twice as, maybe three times the distance of what you can actually see with that little arch of foliage coming over from the distance of where I'm standing here to there it's doubled again the other side and then it's all open back out of the woods but I'm now going to on the low level light which we'll call level one to save on the power I know this is a very small area so I don't need anything really bright because I don't need to see what's actually around me at a long distance so I'm going to go back up this little bit of slope and it's enough light from the torch to be able to distinguish exactly the stones that I'm going to step on. Okay, this is now virtually, it's nearly a vertical, virtually vertical. So I'm going to put one foot there. And the next step is going to be up here, but I've got to be careful that I don't slip if my momentum doesn't get right. It's knowing your own body manoeuvres and the technique you need to use to safely step as I'm now doing. I've got my balance, it's there. Now I'm walking up onto the of the wall. So for the purpose of you guys being able to see from level one to level two to level three, keeping it on that, and you can see I'm going right up now back on the route that I took along the ramparts of the Roman wall. And although maybe the camera doesn't pick it up, I can see really easily where the gateway, the eastern gateway, or th sorry, the, su the southern gateway is open. And I take this slope down. And then take that slope up. I've now come to that bit that I went down and then contoured and then came back up again and traversed up to this point. So now I'm doing it in reverse, but obviously now because there's more to consider, I've got it on its brightest beam so I can see exactly what's around, especially if I'd not been here before. Obviously I do know the train, but I don't want to invite problems. Here I go as I go along the flank of the wall, back to where I'm walking, then back up here again up this slope really steep. There's a few little nodules that I need to sort of get purchased with my boots. Again, it's all technique. Getting used to this sort of terrain. How you want to trek and take different levels, directions, to then apply the right technique. This is some of the wall that I'm going to feature and hope you've deemed some interest of what I did today in between snatches of breath. Final little dip going down. Then final one going up. When normal people <laughs> take the horizontal terrain. But if you don't give yourself a challenge, you don't know what you're actually capable of doing. And I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a Slightly damaged, okay, but it's nothing that's going to harm me 
be sitting for a few moments and I'm going to switch the torch off. And I just look directly out in front of me. Now, of course, you can't see it. <laughs> it's pitch black to you guys, but right in the middle in front of me, horizontal, is literally the horizon of the ground and then the clear sky above it. Well, I can see the constellations of the stars. Now I look directly up above. Cassiopeia is just slightly to my right. So it's virtually near enough the top of my head torch. <laughs> I'll have to nickname my head torch Cassiopeia because Cassiopeia is made up of five stars. Oh, I'm being really philosophical now. Is made up of five stars in a sort of W shape and the two widest ones are really like the, the width of the beam of light coming from the centre one. Yeah, so in the future if you hear me refer. So I'm going to get me Cassiopeia out. <laughs> you know I mean my head torch. A little bit of cloud just cleared. Now straight in front of me at about 30 degrees upwards is the plough. So I'm not going to go into it, but from the position of the plough to the position of Cassiopeia, I know to my far would have to be Orion's belt. Because that's how they're situated. And again, sort of bits of navigation with the stars. You can just from Cassiopeia know where the North Star is, and also from the end of the bucket opening of the plough, if you want to call it that, where the two vertical stars are on their own at the end of the plough formation then about six times the length of that between those two stars protruded upwards locates the North Star and as I tilt back oh, I can see it so I've now got about another half a mile to go regretfully again I couldn't give you the images of what I could see but hopefully you could use your imagination on what I was just talking about there sitting down get an idea of what it's all about for me anyway and hope you get my gist. Taking the head torch off and I'm holding it and I'm just sort of twisting it between my finger and thumbs or fingers and thumb on my left hand where you can obviously see the beam on turning it up and turning it down so I can just sort of move it around if I needed to look at something and then just quickly without moving my head direct the torch but I'm going to take it up to main beam now fullest beam sometimes finally when you so if you think of that central point now if I can just get my finger and point it to say that direction and that say being the brightest area sometimes to get your focus in the dark it's good not to look at that central point but just slightly off to the left or right and you can actually see the overall image a bit better whereas in the dark what happens is the eyes, the cones and the rods get a little bit short circuited and don't focus as well so sometimes you're better off as I'm now going to do I'm going to switch this off and I'm back to the darkness I'm just going to keep still for a moment because I don't want to go pole vaulting catapult myself over the wall and down that 15 foot drop but now what I can see from the moonlight and where the wall isn't shadowing where I'm just about to walk in a moment I'm looking straight centrally in front of me but when I just slightly turn my eyes to the left or right I can see that centre point a little bit easier and again that's another nighttime vision technique that you can use but you need to practice it and get accustomed to it because logically you think that's not going to work so then sometimes what happens is what you're theoretically trying to make work because it's not a habit and what you're not used to um, you confuse it before you even start so again, I'm sort of looking at one of the posts. Just turn the full beam on. There's the post. Now I'm going to turn the light off. I've adjusted to the dark. I'm looking at it, but I'm going to slightly look to its left by about the distance along that little bit of barbed wire is about two foot. And I can actually see that post much easier within proportion in its position than actually looking directly at front of it. But of course, there are times when 
you know, depending on how dark it is, that you will look central at something. But it all depends on the light or darkness that's around you as to how you can apply that technique. Now, good job I stopped here. I was anticipating this to be here somewhere where I could have gone, oh, head first, because I'm talking, multitasking. But now this will be the final bit of the wall as I now make my way right the way up there and I can see a good hundred yards in front of me with this torch. So I've now taken the head torch off again. Just basically to say thanks for watching. As always, hope you found interest in the video. And do check out, if you fast forward, then wind back to some of the spec that I gave indoors prior to coming out on this trek when I did a little bit of a time walk back. Check out some of the details because it gives some of the special deals which I got enable me to get this head torch come holding torch. So I'm really impressed with it. Hope you guys were. And uh, if you check out the deals that you can actually get, I've got some links to go below this video in the description box and also at the end, the titles of this video. And uh, where well, you can check it out and get some really good deals. You know, outdoors people, survivors, preppers, uh, bushcrafters, anyone, wild campers, people that go to campsites, anything that would need a torch like this, it's absolutely fantastic. And there's some really good discount prices leading up to the mid part of the last week of November. So check it out as soon as you can after watching this video, as I'm sure you'll be able to deem yourself a good deal with a torch like this. So as I finish my trek back, I'll say once again, thanks for watching. Really appreciate your interest and catch you in another video soon. Cheers, take care, be safe out there, get the right kit, get the right skills, and you'll have a great time. Cheers.